Okay, um, we are here Auch die with... Gegner sagen, bitte. Ja. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, we're here with Lucas van Forest, the younger brother of John van Forest, and uh, he pulled the first victory today. Aachen leads 3 to 1 against the German champion Zuling. And yeah, give us your thoughts on your game today, in general. Yes. So it uh, was a tough beginning, but in the end he got the time trouble and. Uh, yeah, he blundered uh, like two times or something. Okay. So, uh, yeah, quite happy. And of course, if you win this, it will be great. Uh, yeah. Winning against such a strong team. Yeah. It would be a huge upset. Yeah. All right. You can show us some. Yes. Positions. So, I was black. And we started with some normal stuff. So this is uh, the four knights defense. Very boring opening, of course. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I was actually expecting him to play for a draw today. But yeah, okay, what can you do? So we continued playing the main line. And this is all normal. Um, yeah, this is all normal and now H3 looks a little bit strange but actually it's uh, it's new and it's like a, it's a main line today and uh, okay I just a normal move for back to the farm Queen F3 and Bishop D6 I think this is all theory, d7. And now the theory continues, I think, with bishop f4. Exchanging the bishop, black good bishop. And okay, maybe having like a very small advantage. But he played b3. So his plan clearly is to play knight a4. Maybe get some control on the dark squares. And here, knight e4 is maybe dead, because c5. And now, knight. now the hanging pawn is getting Yes, strong, right? very uh, strong. So, uh, he has to watch out, uh, but he plays b3, which I think is kind of okay. Uh, queen c7. Okay, so I'm just developing all my pieces. Uh, this will be two. And his plan is to play knight e4. And now, also my knight is attacked here. And firstly, I wanted to play bishop e5, which looks like uh, it's spinning the knight, and uh, yeah, white cannot do anything. Ah, there's the trap. Yes, <laughs> that's a nice tactic. Knight takes d5. And uh, yeah, there are some lines here, but it's just very good for, 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 uh, for white. Ah, but yes, you have like bishop h2, but king h1 and g3. So this one, knight takes and g3. And if you look at these bishops, you don't want to play against these. And uh, okay, this bishop is uh, <laughs> so you don't want to play this with um, with black. You need to watch out a little bit. Uh, so what else? Yes, so yeah, I have some stuff to fix here, but I play this one, and the plan was to play after knight a4, which of course is a logical move, to play bishop e5. So uh, this looks logical, just exchanging this strong bishop, but the problem here is you can take, take queen g3. Who can move? Because then the queen is taken. And black has to play this one. And white is taking. And queen takes. Queens will get exchanged. But then white is just slightly more comfortable. Because these pawns are a little bit weak. They're not strong anymore. And white is quite active. Yeah. So I don't want to be in a worse position. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided not to go for this, so I think it's quite smart. Uh, and I played another move, 
B6. So the point now, of course, is you can take the real center to stick with my book. And when you take with my this one, I take like this. Now you see the strong center and the F line is opened and the F6 is protected by your book. It should be a very good book. Yeah, and you can double the roots. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is too bad. Um, but here I think the best way to provide this C4 and attacking the, 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 the maybe slightly weak pulse here. And uh, okay, I will play bishop e5 or something. I don't know, not bishop e5, but something like bishop 8 or maybe white is slightly better. But he played a move which I think is not the best. He's on yeah. five. And now we have this forced continuation of takes. Takes. Bishop takes. Queen takes. Knight e4. Some exchange is happening. And, uh, okay, so this is not really weak anymore. And, yeah, there's not much pressure in the next position. What he does is by playing c4. But this is a, quite a risky move. Maybe something like this is better, but the position is like equalizing. But this is very aggressive. Because now I have the plan of playing bishop is too. Yeah, this is not so safe because I can play this and that's the main idea. Um, but he played king h1, now bishop f4. And the position gets very sharp because f2 is hanging. The d5 is hanging, the king is weak, but okay, when you see this bishop, the next pieces are a little bit weird, so it's not sure what's going on exactly. And okay, when white plays something passively, like it's cool, like I play d6, we has to move f5. Yeah. And now suddenly you can see everything is quite strong. Yeah. And maybe black hat should be better or something. I can take the weak pawns. This knight is looking quite weird. So he chose to play a little bit more active by playing this. It's quite sharp. It's quite sharp now. It's not really clear what's going on. And I played this move, but maybe this is also possible. And what's the time situation? Uh, we had both like 20 minutes. Or something. Okay. And King you won. And I wasn't really happy here because. Uh, my knight is cannot go anywhere. When I play something like this, I think to play rook h1. And now you will just take next move. And my knight cannot really go anywhere. So. Yeah. You have no no black squares on this. Yes, I have nothing. So here, white I thought was much better. So I decided to go for something else. And this is taking. And he took on d5, which I think is almost losing. <laughs> uh, but it looks quite logical. Maybe this was better. But then I will just play with d8. Uh, position looks a little bit unclear to me. I might be star great, but this pawn can be a little bit weak. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure what's exactly going on here. Did he miss something? Yeah, I think he. Okay. Because the variations are very forced from queen takes d5. So, of course, now I have to take king d1. And now. now it's yes. Now it's interesting. What should I play here? And I was contemplating for like 10 minutes here. First, I want to play rook d8. But he can just play queen c5. And now it's not too easy because when he exchanges queens, it could be slightly better. He's more active. He has his two against one here on the queen side. So I chose a very forced continuation, which I saw doing the game was just winning. Bishop H2. And he took on F2. But this was maybe better to play. Uh, and I wasn't exactly sure what to play during the game. Uh, maybe rook d8 is good, at least black is fine. I know, rook eight. yeah, rook eight can. But later, after the game, he pointed out knight h1. <laughs> and we see these two funny pieces here. Yeah. But he has some, I have some serious threats here. 
and I'm the super active group. The eight will come next, and these pieces can really be attacked very easily. So I, thought, so I think this is just uh, yeah, very good for black, but maybe not when it maybe something with B5 or something. But I can just play with Nike 3 and I think I'm better. But not completely clear. But what he chose was King X. Looks suicidal. <laughs> yes. King of one? Or this one? This one. Yes. Uh, but what would you play with black here? Who would I play? I mean, Queen G3 first. Yes. Well, Queen G3 is of course immediately using those King of one. Oh. Losing. <laughs> so I mean, is it possible? Yes, but now I can just make queen ah. of Yes. So queen d3 is not the way to go. Uh, I play bishop d3. Okay. Yes, we go here, and I take the rook. Okay. And okay, when he plays queen d4, which is Threatening mate, I can just play queen d3. And I protect my bishop and protect the shadow. So, what he chose to play was uh, king takes e1. And getting my rook in position to play rook e8. <coughs> and of course, there are two ways to go here. But when he chooses one of these moves, I can just pin the queen. And I'm winning. Um, he went for king f1. Okay, it's, you can also go to f1, but it's, I think, the same. Queen f4. So when he plays this move, I have made. So he has to play queen f3. And now queen e2. And I'm threatening late here. And of course, the most logical move is king g1. And now I just have rook e1, king h2, that's forced. Queen d6. When he plays queen g3, this very nice move. And uh, yeah, the queen will be left unprotected. And when he plays g3, I will play queen d2. Queen g2, rook e2. And also, I will win the queen and probably win the game. If my technique is uh, good. <laughs> so what he chose to play was quite a smart move, bishop b5. And now, some people want to take here, <laughs> but this is not good, because suddenly white, white, is, going yeah, white is going to make uh, black and two moves. Yeah. So, luckily I saw this, <laughs> uh, and I played f6. So now, no more back rank ideas, because I can just follow the king of seven, and I again, I just travel to, to take it. He went for knight c3, f takes, and queen d5. Well, you got to do this ending and turn, just yeah, uh, easily one. Just technically. Yeah. yeah, I just go with my rook here to d2 and just pick off everything. So then I won. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. <laughs>